Hello and welcome to Cruise 5. This is a program where we get to talk to different people to know more about them, but most importantly, what kind of music they like. My guest today is Mrs. Mary Chilima. She is the wife to the Vice President of the Republic of Malawi. Welcome. Thank you very much. First, I'd like to know more about you. What kind of person you are, where you grew up, do you have any siblings, uh, anything like that. First, where did you grow up? Well, I grew up in Blantyre, okay. uh, born and raised in Blantyre, completely educated in Malawi as well. Okay. Um, um, I was born to two very young parents, and oh. uh, originally, though quite young, my parents were 21 when they had me, and uh, we started off in Zingwangwa. Okay. And uh, later, we moved on to different neighborhoods. Okay. I also lived in Jilomoni, okay. and then I settled with my mother and my brother yes. in Namiwawa. So that's where I, I spent the longest time. Brother, you just said brother. Do you have only <laughs> one or there are several I brothers? I have one brother. There's two of us. Okay. Uh, I'm the older. He's uh, four years younger than me. He's actually uh, an engineer okay. that works for ESCOM. Okay. And uh, yeah, so it's just the two, the of, two of, us. of you. The two of us, of course. Growing up, <laughs> growing up, was it just the two of you, or there was always somebody around? I mean, where I grew up, yes. there were only about four of us. Yes. But it was always a full house. Yes. No, I do have a very close knit family, mm -hmm. but um, it was mainly the three of us. I, I was raised by a single mother, mm -hmm. so my mother was a lecturer for the Polytechnic, okay. where she had lectured for at least twenty years, mm -hmm. and then she proceeded to be a diplomat for for ten years. So I grew up with her, and uh, she instilled in us the values of hard work and uh, education. So um, it's, it was mainly the three of us. But uh, Gro Growing up with, uh, with a single mother, I don't know, I, I was quite lucky that both my parents were around when I was growing up. Yes. How, how was it like? I mean, especially since she's, uh, she's uh, we must have been giving her a lot of trouble, I guess. Not really. She was quite tough, I must say. <laughs> uh, very, very tough. Um, she's an educator, so you can imagine being was a lecturer. Was she the disciplinarian was, type? Oh, absolutely. You absolutely. can't come home late. You can't do this. You can't I do that. I couldn't go anywhere as a child. I was always at home. And <laughs> even as a teenager, especially, yeah. she'd always make sure that uh, I'm home. Mm -hmm. And uh, she always kept an eye on me, which I appreciate now as an adult. Mm -hmm. But when you're young and you're growing up, it's not really something that you appreciate. Tell me about sharing of responsibilities in the house. Some parents <laughs> would raise their <laughs> girls as girls and boys and boys. Yes. But mm -hmm. some would say, it doesn't matter what you are, you're going to do everything that anybody can do. Yes, that was the philosophy in our home, mm -hmm. that uh, because my mother was uh, the breadwinner. Yeah. She, uh, that means I was now, being the firstborn, it wasn't even about being a girl or a boy. Mm -hmm. It was as the firstborn I had responsibilities. That yes. means if the, there was a flat tire, yeah. I was the one who had, to had, had to change it. <laughs> I was the one who had to change it. <laughs> and I always felt that she was a bit softer on my brother. Yeah. But then I guess that's what happens with the last born. Yes. But yeah, so um, chores and everything. But mm. number one for her was to make sure that I worked hard in school. Mm -hmm. So she wouldn't penalize me to make sure I'm in the kitchen or et cetera. But as she long as I'm- She give you enough time to do your exactly. education. Exactly, so the grades were number one. Ah. So if I was doing well, she was happy. Fantastic. Yes. Tell yes. us about doing well and tell us about education. <laughs> Where did Edu you do your education? Education, primary, I went through several schools, including okay. uh, Chichiri, yeah. um, a dar up then and yeah. then uh, finally settled at South End where okay. I, I, trans, uh, I transitioned from primary to secondary. Yeah. And then I actually attended a night school for well, a bit. <laughs> because how, how, how did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Um, my mother decided that I should uh, sit for the junior certificate examinations. Okay. But I was doing an IGCSE course. So okay. I had to attend the night school so I could learn uh, the JCE syllabus. So, so you, had to, you did JCE and IGCSE at the same no, time? No, actually, at Form 2 now, after doing the JCE and passing, mm -hmm. I then moved to Our Lady of Wisdom, okay. where I then sat for my That's MSC. in Mulange, right? No, Our Lady Our of Wisdom is in Limbi. Oh, okay, so I'm confusing <laughs> with Providence. <laughs> yes, okay, all right. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so I was actually, I got the highest points in my, in my year. Um, I was also a deputy head girl at Fantastic. Our Lady. Yes. Fantastic. So from there, I then was selected to go to the Polytechnic. Okay where I did a Bachelor of Business Administration. Uh -huh. 
Well, we'll get to hear more about that later, but uh, we're also here to know more about what kind of music you like, because we, we see you in the public circles and we're <laughs> like, does she listen to music at all? Do you listen to music? I absolutely listen to Are music. Are you crazy about music I as I am? <laughs> <laughs> I love music and uh, it was quite difficult for me to just come up with a few songs. Well, I do apologize for that. <laughs> I do apologize you for should. that. <laughs> track number one. Uh, track number one should be Faith Musa, Amaind and Dindidi. Well, that's, that's going to be it. Faith Musa, Amaind and Dindidi. Welcome back. This is Cruise 5 and my guest today is Mrs. Mary Chilima. She is the wife to the Vice President of the Republic of Malawi. But as we are to discover soon, she's more than just that. We just listened to one of the songs that she likes, Faith Musa. I'm sure some of you also like that song. We're going to be listening to her next choice shortly. But before that, tell us more about your professional life. So you say you did your secondary school and then you went to the Polytechnic. And then what happened after that? 
After the Polytechnic, I joined uh, the Reserve Bank of Malawi uh -huh. uh, through um, their, they had a subsidiary called Malswitch. Okay. So I was a marketing and sales officer there and then uh -huh. later promoted to a supervisor. Okay. And then after I left Malswitch, I joined First Merchant Bank as their marketing manager mm -hmm. and then was later headhunted by Standard Bank to join their private banking section. You've been in banks throughout <laughs> your life? I've been in banks throughout my life. Have you ever life. worked outside a bank? Like not professionally, really, but profi not professionally. But my mother used to own a, a, a secretarial college, so okay. I used to teach there. Oh, you also taught? Uh, yeah, I what also taught. Teaching? So teaching, uh, secretarial studies. So <laughs> teaching is also in my blood because my grandmother was a teacher, my great grandfather was also ah, a teacher. I see. So it's it's something that I'm very passionate about education as a whole. How did you end up working in banks your entire profession? Is this I something that you always wanted, or it's not? Or were you attracted to the smell of money? <laughs> Uh, not really, but uh, what happened was, um, I guess the first job led to the next. Yeah. But my passion originally was to be a doctor. I don't How could it think happen? it's How too could it late happen? even. <laughs> were you operating on money or something? <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but uh, because it was a seven-year course, it was something that I, I was put off. Okay. Uh, so I still opted to do the Bachelor of Business Administration instead. But the banking is just that in Malawi, you find that once you enter an industry, yeah. you somehow uh, stuck in that industry. So but I'm open to, to different opportunities. Working in banks, um, how, is it, how is the experience like? It's, y it has its pros and its cons. Uh, Your position seems to be something that you were doing, was it behind the scenes or you know, interacting with people all the time? Oh, I was definitely interacting with a lot of people. I mm. had an opportunity to meet a lot of people, for mm. example, diplomats, um, mm. um, civil servants, yes. uh, a lot of uh, executives. Um, mm. The section that I was working in dealt with what we used to call high net worth individuals. Okay. So we would offer wealth management solutions. Wow. So <laughs> it sounds wow. uh, it sounds glamorous, but the beauty of it was that you'd be able to help somebody grow yeah. their wealth. Okay. Now on the flip side, yeah. you'd find that um, if people were in debt. Yeah and were failing to manage it, then yeah. would have to end up repossessing their oh, assets. That's, that's and that, 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 that I didn't really oh, enjoy. Oh, no, that's awful. I was no, looking at the paper the other time, <laughs> and they had all these houses that they were putting up exactly, for sale. Exactly. And I was like, this must be somebody who couldn't settle their debt. Exactly, yeah. So that, that was not that was Would you be the fun. one to face them and tell them that, I'm sorry, we'll have to, to get your house or something? No, we'd first of all try and manage it, because you could see it from far away to say, look, we're this going into a hole. Yeah. So when we reach a point where we have to take it, by then hopefully you've managed the situation. But yeah, I'm it's a reality of life. I'm sure that's what you didn't like most about it. No, I didn't like that at all. Mm. Plus, I also felt that uh, I could get more out of my career. Yeah. I just felt that uh, working in the financial sector was very limited, but yeah. I was more interested in a more diverse um, career. So we'll you see. <laughs> you ended up becoming... Um, the, uh, the the wife to the vice president. Mm -hmm. If this didn't come along, were you gonna change careers? Were you considering changing your careers? I had point? actually left the bank. I was on a sabbatical for a year, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, so I had left the bank to take a sabbatical because I was interested in pursuing the education angle. Mm -hmm. Now within that year is when this came along. Yes. So I guess you just follow the path that God has laid out for you. So are you working now or? Well, right now I would love to work, but. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot, probably. I mean, the whole place would be swamped with, uh, with yes, security officers yes, and stuff. Yes, unfortunately. Yes, I've actually, I actually sat down and thought about it, and I thought that the best job would probably be as a lecturer, because then if I have to have security, they yeah. can be part of the students. So that's something I'm, I'm actually considering for the future. Well, you would need a lot of security around students, because the students <laughs> these days are really, really <laughs> angry. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm sure we could relate, we okay. could find a, a common ground. My guest today, Mrs. Mary Chilima, the wife to the Vice President of the Republic of Malawi. What next song do you want us to play for you? I love to dance, so uh -huh. can we do Nihamba Nawe by Mafiki Zola? I feel like putting on my dancing shoes already. <laughs> Let's listen to the track then.
Well, lots of dancing there. Do you do you dance? I do, I do. That's a passion of mine and it's an entire family. When we get together, we dance. So it's something that I enjoy and I find that a lot of young people love to dance in Malawi too. That, that's what I was going to say that, well, you can, now I think there are limited places where you can go dancing, oh, I guess. Oh, it's one of the disadvantages. <laughs> Even if you we go, <laughs> you even can only if dance around family exactly, or people like that. Exactly, and even if you're at a formal function, you can only dance to the first two songs, and then and you then have, you have to, to go. And you're like, oh no, I want to dance the <laughs> yes, music. Yes, and then it's, the a, it's fine. It comes with the territory. I yeah. guess it does. Yes, I yes. guess it does. Mm -hmm. Meeting the vice president as a man that you would eventually marry. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about it. How did it come about? <laughs> Well, I've known him for the past 21 years. Okay. We've been together for the past 17. All right. Um, uh, I met him at church, actually. Oh, are you, are you Catholic? We are, we, yes, we're both Catholics. So, I see. So, yes, we met at church, and uh, the courtship uh, lasted a couple of years until okay. eventually, yeah, we got together. So, um, I knew him first as a Christian, as a Catholic, mm -hmm. and then uh, the rest followed. <laughs> the rest followed, indeed. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this, uh, being vice president, which I think we'll get to a little bit later, uh, but what I want to know now is uh, you being the wife to the vice president of Malawi, mm -hmm. what opportunities does that bring? Or what, what excites you about that? Um, it's a it's a wonderful platform to be to be honest. Um, it's an opportunity to interact with a, a lot of different people at all levels of life. So I look at it as an opportunity to grow. So there's a lot of growth in myself as a person, mm -hmm. and uh, it also helps me to learn about the different aspects of what Malawi is going through. So every time we're attending a, a public event or a, or government function. You learn a lot. You learn a lot because, if, for example, if it's an education function, then whatever issues are raised and how they're being ta uh, uh, targeted, you, you get to, to listen in and uh, to learn. But also I've been given the opportunity to preside over some functions, mm -hmm. so that also forces me to, to learn about the subject that I'm going to talk about as well as to just generally expi expand my worldview. I, I think there's always a flurry of activities happening. Do you ever find time to yourself? Like yes. some me time? Do, do you, no, like honestly, yes. do you have time where you can say, okay, now this is just me and just, I just yeah. want to chill? Actually, there's a lot of downtime, I find. Uh, I'm, I'm mainly a housewife and a mother, really, because you... You spend time at home. I spend a lot of time at home. I do have my own uh, other ventures that I do, but uh, um, there is a lot of time for me to just reflect on, on what's going on and... Uh, hopefully be a better mother and mm -hmm. wife. Yes. Do you have children at home? I have children. I have two children. Okay. My son's 15. Okay. He is uh, at Kamuz Academy. Okay. And my daughter is eight. And so, I mean, both obviously, is to stay with them. Uh, the son, well, is in boarding school, yes. But, but, but the but daughter? Yes, yeah, the daughter is with me all the time. So Does she that's give you my a lot number of one job. <laughs> no. Well, it was a bit tough for her being suddenly the vice president's daughter. Yes. Um, I think she was six at the time. Yeah. And you find that she had begun to develop a little bit of a princess mentality. Yes, yes. So we managed that. But yeah. she's now down to earth and she, she goes with the floor. Well, it's not easy. I mean, the, she must get a lot of attention. Yes, she does. She, she does, but uh, we're managing it because we don't want her to, to get a bit too pompous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Too preoccupied. We, we with teach that. her that these are things that come and go. Okay. So we, she's she's grounded, and they're both grounded. Yeah. What surprised you most getting to that position as the wife to the vice president of Malawi? What is it that you didn't really anticipate, or nobody nobody prepared you for this, and you're like, I never thought it's, go it's going to be like this. The expectation from people uh -huh. for uh, different l types of People expect you to do everything, don't they? Yes. Um, I'm on social media, so you find that uh, most of the messages I get are requests for school fees, requests for <gasps> hospital assistance. And it's, it's hard for me to say no because I am, <laughs> I mean, I am uh, the wife to the VP, <laughs> yeah. not necessarily the VP. And yeah. um, so what I can do in terms of financially... Uh, in terms of assistance is very limited. So managing people's expectation because they just expect that there's a lot of wealth They expect there. the whole yeah. world from you. Yeah, yeah. so it's, uh, that's that I didn't know that yeah. I uh, to expect. How yeah. do you manage that then? 
Well, um, I try sometimes to make it structured. Sometimes you just have to structured. be honest, I guess. <laughs> and sometimes you just have to like, But no, unfortunately, the honesty I, I can't do this. is seen as, uh, maybe you're, looking, you're being seen you're as a bit s- stingy yeah. and not really generous. But then what I try to do is I try to manage to say, okay, this is only, I can only do so much. Mm. So I try and structure it to make sure that uh, what I can do, I do. Uh, but mostly I, I lend the platform itself to say, look, if you want to be seen, if you want your cause to be known, I can help you. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, I did that, uh, we did the Beyond You group where they had the Walter Blunder and they yes. involved me. Yeah. So for me, that's, that is a better use of, of this office where exactly. you can actually bring light to the different causes that are, that are happening. What was, it, what was it like, by the way, getting involved in that initiative? Oh, it was wonderful. That was exciting. I was in London at the time and mm-hmm. I was just following it on, 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 on social media yes, and I was like, this yes. is really amazing. No, it's really great because uh, those kids, what they did was, was, was amazing. It was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. And the fact that they are children from, uh, I would say, middle to upper class. Yes. They didn't have to do that. Yeah. But they felt the need to actually help. For me, that was very inspirational. All right. So tell us about your Next choice, what, what should be the third song that we should play for you? Uh, if you could play for me uh, Palibe Vudo by Lulu, Good. popularly known as Daima Daima. I was like, when you said Palibe Vudo, I was like, what song is this? Okay, yes. so let's listen to some Lulu now. Thank you. This is Cruise 5. 
where we get to talk to different people about different things in life. But most importantly, we get to listen to their lovely, favorite, all-time greats. And my guest today is Mrs. Mary Chilima. She is the wife to the Vice President of the Republic of Malawi. And uh, she says she likes music and she likes a lot of dancing as well. What else do you like doing in your downtime? Do you, do you, do you watch movies? Do you do sports, for instance? I'm not a very sporty person, to be honest. I had to learn chess because <laughs> I was getting worried that I wasn't oh. going to know any sport at all. Uh, well, I used to play soccer, actually, in university. Oh, really? Yes, and uh, basketball. Yeah. But now as an adult, to be honest, uh, yes. swimming, yes. Yeah. But what I do is read, and I read a lot. I read up what? to two or three books a week. <sighs> Unfortunately, <laughs> it's only fiction. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to say. What kind of, what kind of books do I you wish, like reading? I wish I could convince myself to go. My <laughs> mother and my brother and my whole family, my husband, has yeah. been trying to get me to read uh, the more, um, you know, helpful books. Yeah, yeah. But I, I like crime fiction, thrillers, fiction is fun. you know. Yeah, I love fiction. fiction. Is fun. It, it's my way, it's my escape, and I enjoy yeah. it. I do watch a lot of series on TV as well. I'm okay. not very, not, 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 not much movies, to be honest. Some people don't like series because they say it keeps going on and <laughs> on, and they just get <laughs> exasperated. Like, when is this story going to end? No, but for me, I can only handle it in small doses. So, yeah. for example, Game of Thrones, yeah. I'm a fan. Um, you have uh, things like a Scandal, yeah, yeah. Uh, Grey's Anatomy. So yeah. those are things that I, I really enjoy watching. Game of Thrones is is, is fantastic. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. It's very, very yes. adventurous. Yes. And uh, I think the plots are really, really complete. They're all over the place. Absolutely. They're like three yes. or four plots running Exactly. And the hero always dies. So the, it's, the it's, hero quite, always dies. it's quite different. Yeah. But they had to bring Jon Snow back to life because people protested yes. when they killed him. Yes, yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I do, I okay. do, I do enjoy that. Um, so uh, the books that you like reading, any any particular favorite um, uh, writer, author? Um, right now, I'm crushing on James Patterson. Okay. So uh, um, I read a lot of his books. So I follow the series as they come. Do you have friends? Oh yes, I do. Like have people friends. you hang out with. <laughs> I like do. Like people have you can friends. just go and say, "Look, I really <laughs> feel stressed out. Can we yes. just meet for a drink, probably?" No. Yes. The disadvantage is that I can't visit them anymore, okay. so they always have to come to me. So I do have a, a couple of friends, uh, mm. some in the banking industry. Yeah. And, uh, the ones that you made growing up uh, exactly. in your career. Yes, so okay. growing up and in my career as mm -hmm. well. So I've maintained uh, quite an, a number of good friendships with uh, different people. Yeah, the first the lady, do, do you get to meet often? Um, not as often as I would like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do. I think you must share mm -hmm. in the challenges that you, you face yes, in, in, in yes, your positions. Yes, we've actually discussed this. Uh, mm. The same expectation uh, from the people is one of the problems she yes. has as well. But uh, sh I do consider her my boss. Yeah. So, you know, the, the type of interaction is, is more on a professional angle. But it's, she's someone that I respect very much. Okay. So can you tell us the fourth song that we should listen to in this program? Uh, let's go Bob Marley. Uh, ah, Re Bob Marley. Redemption song. Oh, that one was a phenomenal it artist. It is. He do you is, listen to a lot of Bob Marley? I do, but uh, mainly just the, the hits. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't listen to the rare to the rare tracks of Bob Marley. There's yeah. a lot of music that never really got popular, but when you listen to it... It's quite deep. And he was a very good composer as well. Yes, he was. Like he this was. song, Redemption Song, is a yes. powerful song. Yes, the good ones always die young. <laughs> Malawi as a country. Tell me what fascinates you about it. What really gets you excited about being a Malawian? Um, having traveled the world quite, quite frequently, I find that being a Malawian is one of the most uh, peaceful and uh, grounding mm. um, experiences. We are very happy people. Mm -hmm. The little that we have makes mm -hmm. us very happy. We're very innocent people. Mm -hmm. When I travel, you get exposed to quite a lot of very strange behaviors, and I'm very grateful for our culture, I'm grateful for the diversity of the people. I'm also grateful for the Malawi itself as a country, the natural resources that we have. Uh, having traveled to countries like Israel and Egypt, mm -hmm. and you see um, what they have to survive on, then you come back here where we have fresh water, lakes everywhere. I really appreciate that about Malawi. I did know about how wonderful the sun we have here is until I went to other parts of the world. Yes. And I, and I really missed the sunshine. <laughs> Proper, yes. hot, 
yes. sunshine. And it's just perfect. It's not too hot. It's not, it's too, not too hot. Too it's cold. not too cold. The climate is, is great. Uh, we have a beautiful country, to be honest. What do you think are things that we could do better as a country? Some things that you say, oh, come on, Malawi, mm. uh, this, this we can work on. Well, currently, the, the issue that is the hot issue with me is uh, of a population. Mm -hmm. That scares me because yeah. I can see it's already leading to a lot of climate change, the deforestation, and we have uh, a lot of child marriages, yes. and there's a lot of um, other issues. They say our fertility rate is very, very high. It's, and it's scary because I understand in 2050 we will have probably doubled our numbers, and that's not something to smile at because the resources remain the same. So it's frustrating to see that um, we're not able to put a curb on this yeah. as a people yeah. because, I mean, you can't really control how many people, how many children a person can have. It has to be a, a personal decision. Well, China did, I guess. Yes, I, mean, I know, but <laughs> that was quite an extreme. <laughs> and now they're in a situation where yeah, they're, 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 they're trying to revise to, that. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So that really, really um, scares me, to be honest, to, to say mm. what's going to happen for my children's generation or when I'm old, how, what, what kind of country will Malawi be? In your office as the wife to the vice president, what, what are you doing? What are you passionate about? What, what kind of initiatives are you driving forward? Okay, I'm very passionate about children. Okay. So I do, I do have several initiatives. For example, I'm building a girls' hostel in, in the northern uh, region. Wonderful. In the southern region, I have a group of up to 65 children aged between 4 to 12 that I'm assisting. So mm -hmm. we give them books, clothing. We put iron sheeting on their homes just mm -hmm. to try and encourage them to remain in school. And here in the uh, central region, I, I do have um, children that I adopted. Mm -hmm. These are street children. Oh, really? Exactly. So I actually sponsor them uh, in terms of uh, education to make sure they're still going to school. Oh, really? But there's one particular group of children, a child-headed household that I adopted wow. and I take care of completely as if these are my, my Your kids. Your own children <laughs> yes, that you provide for less. them for everything that they need? Yes, I do. How did you, did you physically meet these people? or Yes, was I actually office? met them uh, um, uh, last year, or was it two years ago, and I went to the social rehabilitation center here in Lilongwe. Uh -huh. So they, they people, they actually say to me, there's this four children who don't have anything. Oh my God. And they need somebody to take care of them. The oldest wow. was at the time 15. And the youngest is actually two, uh, four years old. That's so a young kid. It's a very young kid. Mm -hmm. So you find that uh, at, at one point I even had them in my home for one night because th they were all sick at the same time. They oh, had malaria and pathetic. they needed uh, supervision. But their grandmother is alive, so we've now incorporated her into taking care of them. So that's something that I, I feel that a lot of us as women, in uh, career women, can actually adopt remotely. You don't have to bring them into your house. Exactly. But you can just support them just to make sure that they're still going to school. It's not a particularly new concept because growing up in an African setup, mm -hmm. we, we are built to look out for each other. Yes. We've got this com communal behavior. Absolutely. In a Absolutely. village, you raise mm -hmm. everybody's child is yes. your own child. Yes. And, and I think it seems we, we seem to be losing, we seem to be losing that. that. It's now more about me, 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 me. What can I do as an individual, not as the communal ideal? Yeah. So it's quite, it's quite sad that that's the, the way of the future, I suppose. But uh, yeah, and I'm also working with an organization called Vihema that mm -hmm. uh, looks after people that are both deaf and blind. Mm -hmm. So this is something that's a new partnership. And uh, they wanted me, they've chosen me as a patron, so I will hopefully help them to um, mobilize resources to help these people. This is an area, this is a disability that is usually overlooked because you find that people focus on either just the deaf yes. or just the blind, but yeah. not those that have both. Yeah. So you can imagine how challenging it is. It must be, it must be very, very difficult. Communication is, is, is very difficult. It's zero. Yes, so you have to use what they call tactile communication, which is touch, yeah. because they can't see, so they can't hear, so, uh, yeah. It's challenging. So I thought that this is something that I'm definitely um, very interested in, in supporting. Amazing stuff. We need to wind up now, and I've got a series of questions that I'd like to ask you, just to see what you've been through in your life. Okay. And you can just answer yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> Very simple. All right. Simple and straightforward. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's go. I've got some cruise questions for you. Mm -hmm. The first question is, what is your full name? 
This is the only question that you, have, you all have to answer <laughs> yes or no. What's your full name? My name is Mary Nkamanyachi Chiwambo Chilima. Do you have any tattoos? No. <laughs> Do you have any piercings? No, yes, ears. <laughs> Do you have children? Yes. Have you ever shot a gun? Yes. <laughs> have you cried over someone? Yes. <laughs> have you fallen in love before? Yes. Have you ever killed a chicken before? No. <laughs> have you gotten into a fight before? Yes. <laughs> have you gotten any surgeries? Yes. <laughs> have you stayed in a hospital? Yes. Have you donated blood? Yes. Have you ever smoked weed? No. <laughs> have you ever drank alcohol? Yes. Have you broken someone's heart? Yes. <laughs> have you had a crush on someone? Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was some interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why we have to wind up. Do you have any last remarks that you'd like to say? No, I just want to say thank you very much for granting me the opportunity to talk to you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And I wish you the best. It's been awesome. Your last choice, your last track. My last track. Let's do uh, Michelle Williams, When Jesus Says Yes, Nobody Can Say No. Hallelujah. I hope you're saying <laughs> hallelujah to that. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you. I wish you the best. Thank you very much. Thank you.